Okay, so this is a tutorial on the knee joint. So the knee joint is the largest synovial joint in the body, and it's this, these articulations between the femur and the tibia, and also between the patella and the femur. So it's, um, it's a hinge joint, and the main movements you get at this joint are flexion and extension. So in this position here, which we're looking at the model, this is in the fully extended position, so you get flexion and extension. So flexion is back this way and extension is up this way. And you also get a little bit of um, rotation at this joint. So when the joint is flexed, so when the femur is pulled up this way, you get a little bit of um, uh, medial and lateral rotation. But in, in full extension, which is what we're looking at here, so in the standing position, the, the femur medially rotates on the tibia and the joint is locked into position and you've got ligaments on either side, collateral ligaments, which uh, tighten to lock this joint into, into, into position, so it's stable in this position. And then to unlock the joint, the, the femur is laterally rotated on the tibia. So first we'll just take a look at the, um, the articular surfaces of this joint. So the articular surfaces are covered by high, hyaline cartilage, um, and you've got the femoral condyles, so I'll just rotate it back. So you've got these two femoral condyles articulating with the tibial condyles of the tibia. So the superior aspect of the tibial condyles. So we've got a medial and a lateral femoral condyle here. Um, and we've got the same for the, for, the, for the tibia. So we've got medial and lateral tibial condyles. And the articular surface of the tibial condyles is the superior surface, which I'll show you in a moment. So the two femoral condyles here are separated by this region which sits between them. This is the intercondylar fossa. Um, so this, this, this fossa, this intercondylar fossa, is the area where the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments um, have their proximal attachment. So I'll come on to talk, talk about that in a, in a moment. Um, and just just above the the condyles, you've got epicondyles. So this is the uh, site of proximal detachment for the collateral ligaments, the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, or the tibial and fibula lateral uh, fibula collateral ligaments. So the epicondyles are actually uh, are, they're not articular. So you've got these epicondyles here where the collateral ligaments attach. And then anteriorly, if I just remove the patella bone, um, you've got this little sort of groove in the femur where the where the patella articulates. So we'll just take a look at the the tibia as well. So the proximal, the, uh, look at the proximal tibia. So you've got the tibial condyles which articulate with the um, femoral condyles. So you've got a medial tibial condyle and a lateral tibial condyle. And I'll just remove the uh, the other bone so we can look at the superior aspect of the tibial condyle. So I'm just going to rotate rotate the model. So we're looking looking at the superior aspect, and you can see the the um, sort of faded fibula. So that's this side is lateral, this side's medial, and we've got anterior up here, posterior back here. So I'll just fade out those bones now, and we'll look at the superior surface of this bone. So this is the articular surface of the, the tibia, tibial condyles. So medially we've got, well, well we're looking at the superior surface of the medial condyle and here's the superior surface of the lateral tibial condyle. And in between these two condyles you've got this region, so the intercondylar region. And this, this region is important because you get the cartilage, the menisci of the knee joint attaching in this region and also the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments attach in this region. And I'll show you that. I will show you that in this tutorial. So this whole, this whole region, this whole superior surface is referred to as the tibial plateau. So it consists of the articular surfaces of the, um, the tibial condyles and this intercondylar region. So that's the tibial plateau. So if I just rotate the model around a little bit, you can see that there's this sort of 
there's this eminence, this protuberance of bone. So this is the intercondylar eminence. And um, laterally, we've got the lateral intercondylar tubercle. And medially, we've got the medial intercondylar tubercle. So just while we're, um, we're looking at this view, um, I'll just talk a little bit about the menisci. So these are two, these are fibrocartilaginous structures which sit um, on either side and they're crescent shaped. So the menisci are, um, are also called semi-lunar cartilages because of their sort of half moon shape. And they, they function really to act as shock, shock absorbers and they sort of accommodate changes in the movements of the bones at this joint. So I'll just switch over to a, another diagram. So we're looking at uh, the exact same view. We're looking superiorly at the tibia, at the tibial plateau, and this is anterior up here, posterior down this side. So you can see these crescent-shaped menisci. So you've got a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus. And you can see how they attach in this central intercondylar region. You've also got the anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligaments attaching in this um, intercondylar region. So you can see anteriorly that there's this ligament which connects the two menisci. So this is called the transverse ligament. So some other things to mention are that the, the medial meniscus is actually attached, um, attached medially to the tibial collateral ligament, um, or sort of blended with the fibres of the tibial collateral ligament and also to the capsule of the joint of the knee. So it's actually, it's not very mobile because of these attachments, whereas the lateral meniscus um, doesn't have these attachments to the joint capsule, so it's a lot more mobile.